Hello. What concept in maths connects the length of the fence that you'll require to fence your garden? The length of the pavement around your park? Or simply the dimensions given in the floor plan of your house? The concept which connects all three of these is perimeter of 2D shapes. Welcome to the session on perimeter. In this lesson, we'll understand what are perimeters of 2D shapes? How do we go about calculating perimeter for any 2D shape? And finally, we'll understand how do we calculate perimeter for compound shapes? Let's begin then. First, let's find out what is perimeter. Perimeter is simply the distance around any shape. It is the sum of the lengths of the boundaries of any shape. For example, if I want to find the perimeter of this particular rectangle, all I need to do is try to find out how much distance would this printer jog in one lap. Didn't understand? Okay, let's look at it. So she will go one length, then a width, then another length, and another width. So the distance that she has covered in this process in one lap is nothing but the perimeter of that particular rectangle. Well, let's put some values to understand that better. So how do you find perimeter of any 2D shape? You simply have to add the lengths of the boundaries of the shape. So you have now added some values. The length of that park was 25 meters and the width is 15 meters. So now let's see how do we calculate the perimeter of that particular rectangle. Let's bring the sprinter once again. Let's see how far will she jog in one lap. So first, she will go one length of that park, which is 25 meters. Then she will go one width of the park, which is 15 meters. Then another length, which is 25 meters more. And finally, one more width, which is 15 meters. So in all, she has covered a distance of 25 plus 15 plus 25 plus 15, which is 80 meters. So the perimeter of this park is 80 meters. Right? So did you understand how to calculate the perimeter of any 2D shape? It's basically you need to add the lengths of the boundaries of any shape. So in case of a rectangle, as you can see, the perimeter would be length plus width, plus length, plus width. In other words, you need to add twice the length and twice the width of the rectangle to find the perimeter, right? Remember, the unit of perimeter will be the same as the unit of length because we are simply adding the lengths to calculate the perimeter. The unit of length is either kilometers, millimeters, centimeters, or meters, right? Same will be the case with perimeter. In case of perimeter, the units will also be the same, kilometers, millimeters, centimeters, meters, the same as unit of length. Now, sometimes the perimeter, calculation of perimeters could be complicated, okay? The examiner may not give you all the dimensions. For example, in this shape, he has given you only two dimensions, 10 meters and 15 meters. How do you think you can calculate the rest of the four sides of this hexagon? Well, that is where you need to understand how do we interpret those little symbols. If you look at each side, there are some symbols, okay, small dashes which have been drawn along each side. Now, what do they indicate? Remember, dashes of the same type indicates sides that are of same length, which means the sides which have one dash would all have the same length, and the sides having two dashes will again have the same lengths. As you can see, one of the sides with one dash has indicated that it is 10 meters long, which means the rest of them will also be 10 meters long, right? So first, let us calculate what will be the side opposite to 15 meters. Now, incidentally, 15 meter side has two dashes along the length. And the one opposite to that side is, has also got two dashes, which means even that side would be 15 meters long. Likewise, 
the side which is 10 meters long has one dash along that. Similarly, the rest of the three sides also have one dashes indicating each one of them will be 10 meters long. So we have managed to find out the length of each of the side of this hexagon. All I need to do now is add each of those sides, the lengths of those sides, and you get the perimeter. So 10 plus 15 plus 10 plus 10 plus 15 plus 10 equals 70 meters. And that's what is the perimeter of that hexagon. Right? Now that we have understood how to find perimeter for any 2D shape, simply you need to add the lengths of the boundaries, the sides of that shape. Let's now find out how do we go about finding the perimeter of a compound shape. Now, what is a compound shape? Well, compound shapes are made up of two or more basic shapes. They are formed by combining two or more basic shapes, although the final shape may not be a one of those standard shape. Okay, they may be irregular shapes. For example, if you look at the Big Ben, and if you look at this facade of the Big Ben, facade is basically the front view of the Big Ben, it is made up of several shapes. It has rectangle at the bottom. On top of it, there's a trapezium, right? There's a little trapezium there. Then we have another rectangle, one more on top of that. And then there's one more trapezium, then a little square. And finally, right at the top, there's a triangle. So as you can see, the facade of the Big Ben is actually a compound shape because it consists of several you, uh, several standard shapes which are joined together to make that shape, right? So compound shapes are irregular shapes, which are not geometric shapes, but we can break them into regular geometric shapes. For example, each of the shapes at the bottom are compound shapes because they are not regular shapes, they are irregular shapes. But with little lines, you'll realize I can divide each of those shapes into standard shapes. For example, the yellow shape can be divided into two rectangles, while the rest of the three shapes can be divided into a triangle and a rectangle, as you can see. So how do we find perimeter for any compound shape? For that, we need to understand this concept of how do we join two or more basic shapes. So here we have two rectangles with lengths five centimeters and width two centimeters. What do you think is the perimeter of each of these rectangles? Well, for that, we need to find the missing lens first. As you know, in a rectangle, opposite sides will have the same length, right? So the missing lens of each of these rectangles are here. The lens will be five centimeters. The widths will be two centimeters. So the perimeter of that rectangles, each of those rectangles, in fact, would be two plus five plus two plus five, which is, 14 centimeters. Well, now the big question. What if I combine these two shapes to make one compound shape? Will the perimeter be 14 plus 14, 28 centimeters? Well, your question would be, well, that depends on how you combine them, right? So there are two ways in which I can combine it. One along the length, something like that. So we join the length to make one compound shape or two along the width. So we can join the width of the two rectangles to make that shape. Now, what do you think? Okay, the perimeter of each of these shapes, will it be 28 centimeters? Because each of those individual rectangle had perimeters of 14 centimeters. So when I put them together, will it be 28 centimeters? Let's look at that. But before that, let's go back and understand what was the definition of perimeter of any shape. The perimeter was the sum of the lengths of the boundaries of any shape. Remember, the boundaries is the outer, uh, outer sides, okay? For example, which are the boundaries of the shape on the left? Okay, let's put the dimensions first. So we have put the dimensions from the two rectangles on the top. And let me now mark the boundary of the shape on the left. It's being marked with red. And now let's mark the boundary for the shape on the right. So as you can see, 
when we are marking the boundary, the edges along which the two shapes were joined in the first place were never considered. Look at the, the five centimeter edge along which the two rectangles were joined on the left was never considered as a part of the boundary. So they should never be considered for the perimeter, right? The same is the case with the shape on the right. Okay, the two centimeters width along which the two shapes were joined, the two rectangles were joined, that's not a part on the boundary and hence will not be considered for perimeter. So definitely the perimeter of each of these shapes will definitely not be 14 plus 14. Let's calculate the perimeter for the shape on the left first. It will be five plus two plus two plus five plus two plus two, which is 18 centimeters as you can see. What about the shape on the right? The perimeter would be five plus five plus two plus five plus five plus two, which is 24 centimeter. So as you can see, neither of these is 28 centimeters. Right, that's interesting, right? Now that we understood how compound shapes uh, are made and why the perimeters of the compound shapes is not equal to the sum of the perimeters of the individual shapes from which they were formed. Let's go on to find out the perimeter of this particular compound shape, an L-shaped figure. Uh, the first step in finding the perimeter of any compound shape is usually to find the missing sides. So in this case, as you can see, the side on the left, we don't have the length and the side on the top, we don't have the length. So let's first name them as A and B. Okay, so let's first find out what does A and B mean? Okay, as in what is the length of side A and the length of side B? For that, first let us divide this compound shape into two rectangles with that little line there, dotted line. If you look at the bottom rectangle carefully, the length of the rectangle is six centimeters as indicated by the the base side, right? The base says six centimeters. But that rectangle on the opposite side has a dimension of A plus three. Because opposite sides have the same length in the rectangle, A plus three will be equal to six centimeters, which means A is three centimeters. And as you can see, A is one of those missing dimension on the top, right? So that's three centimeters. So we managed to find one of those missing dimension. What about the other missing dimension now? So to find B, we need to divide that into two parts. The B has a bottom part and the top part. The bottom part of B is actually the width of the rectangle at the bottom, which is two centimeters. And the top part of B is actually the length of the rectangle at the top, right? Which is five centimeters which means B has a combined length of two plus five, which is seven centimeters. Now we have all the dimensions to find the perimeter of that compound shape. So how do we go about finding the perimeter of that shape then? Well, we just add up all the values. It is three plus five plus three plus two plus six plus seven which is 26 centimeters. That's the perimeter of that compound shape. So the first step is usually to find the missing sides, okay, the lengths of the missing side, sorry, the missing lengths of the sides, I would say, okay. And finally, you add them up to get the answer. Right, now I have an interesting method to find perimeter of compound shape. And this is what we call the boxing method. <laughs> yeah, the boxing method to find perimeter of compound shape. And this is not the fight, okay? The boxing in kind of fight. It's the boxing of the case of boxes, okay? So how do we box a compound shape? First of all, let's understand that this method, the boxing method is only useful when finding the perimeter of rectilinear shapes. Now, what are rectilinear shapes? These are shapes which are entirely made up of rectangles and squares. Now you might feel that, oh, that's not so useful, but nevertheless, this is a powerful technique to find perimeter of compound shapes which are made up of rectilinear shapes, okay? Let's have a look at that. 
So we had this shape, remember, originally. And then we did that complicated process of finding the missing sides and then adding them up and so on, right? Now you'd realize using boxing method, you can get the perimeter in a flash without any effort. What do we need to do? We need to find the exact size of the box into which this compound shape will fit. When I say exact size, okay, there should be no loose ends, okay, at the, towards the end. Now, there should be no space left. It should be cut to cut, exactly fit this particular shape. For example, a box like that would fit this shape exactly. Do you agree? Yes, right? So now, the perimeter of this box, the rectangle, will be the same as the perimeter of the compound shape. You don't believe me? Okay, let's go and find out. The width of this particular box is six centimeters. That's given to us. What do you think is the height of the box or the length of the box? Well, the length of the box will be two centimeters plus five centimeters, which is actually seven centimeters, right? Would you like to see the see that again? Okay, look at it. So this was the original shape. So the width, uh, the height of the box. Okay, for that we need the bottom width. Okay, the width of the bottom part of the rectangle, as you can see, that's two centimeters, and the length of the top rectangle, which is five centimeters. If I put them together, I'll get the length of this particular box, which is seven centimeters. And what is the perimeter of this box now? It is seven plus six plus seven plus six, which is 26 centimeters. Now you may check the answer that we got in the previous example. It is the same as this one, 26 centimeters, right? It's surprising, right? So all you need to do is find an exact size box, a rectangular box, which will fit this compound shape. And then you add up the lens and you get the answer. You find the perimeter of the box, which will be the same as the perimeter of the compound shape, right? Now, it might seem as simple as that, but there's a small catch there, okay? You need to note that you, you have to subtract any length which is superimposing inside the box. You didn't understand? Okay, which are the lengths inside the box? In this case, inside the box, we have these two lengths, as you can see. Rest of them are on the periphery, okay? Inside the box are only these two lengths. Are they overlapping? Are they superimposing? No, right? They are just touching each other, but there's no superimposition, okay? Or they don't overlap each other, which means you don't have to subtract anything in this case. That 26 centimeters is your final answer. Now we'll take an example where we need to do that correction, okay? We may have to do that correction. So let's look at this particular compound shape. Now, this looks really weird shape. If I were to go uh, about it finding by the normal method, this would take a while because we need to find so many missing dimensions. So let's use the boxing method to find the perimeter of the shape. For that, we need to find a box which will exactly fit the shape, right? The box would be something like that. Yes, we have exactly fit that particular shape. Now, as you can see, the width of that rectangle the box that is, is 35 centimeters and the height is 50 centimeters, which means the perimeter of that box would be 50 plus 35 plus 50 plus 35, which is 170 centimeters. Now the big catch, okay? Do we have any dimensions inside the box which are superimposing? Do we have any lengths which are inside the box which are overlapping? Let's see. If I look at the vertical uh, lengths, Okay, there's no superimposing. Okay, because if you see, there are only two vertical lines, one blue and one orange, but they are in the same line. So they are not overlapping. So we don't have to do any correction for them. But if you look at the horizontal line, if you look at that five centimeters line, they are actually overlapping, right? Look at that. If you look at that, it's overlapping, which means five plus five, there's a 10 centimeters overlap in this particular uh, object. And hence we need to subtract 10 centimeters from a final answer. And hence the final answer will be 160 centimeters, which is the perimeter of the compound shape. 
Now I agree, okay, it could be a little tricky here to find out which lengths are superimposing. But once you understand this method, this is very powerful, as you can see, okay, you don't have to do a lot of calculations. You just have to find the perimeter of the box, do that little tweak, the correction, and yo, you get your answer. Well, here's your assignment for this particular session. We have loads of compound shapes. All you need to do is first find the missing sides in whichever compound shape, all the sides are not given. You find the missing sides of these shapes. And two, you find the perimeter of each of these compound shapes. And let me check, okay, how many of you can get to that challenge question there at the bottom, right? Well, that's the end of today's session. We learned about perimeters of 2D shape. The three things that we learned in today's session is we understood what is perimeter. What do we mean by perimeter of any 2D shape? Then we went on to know how do we calculate the perimeter of any 2D shapes? And finally, we understood how do we calculate the perimeter of any compound shapes? And we also learned about that boxing method. Remember that, right? I enjoyed bringing this session to you. Thank you very much.